Welcome to the Deadly Dixon channel. Today I'm going to be talking about a movie called Serenity. This movie came out in 2005. Don't get it confused with the 2019 movie. Who was in that? I forgot who was in that. A couple of famous people. This is Serenity based on the show Firefly by Josh Whedon. Yes, I know he's an asshole. However, I had did a podcast on Firefly, the TV show, and I described and talked about my love of it and how it was a disaster in a sense. 11 of 14 aired episodes got canceled. You can go listen to the podcast if you want. It's in my TV talk section as a playlist. So Josh Whedon gets canceled. He's trying to scramble. He figures, you know what? I could do a uh, movie script. So he gets the script ready. The odd thing about it is this movie is really good, borderlining on great. I love the movie. It's a standalone movie with no real connection to the show. It's, I love it. Now, yeah, I might be able to look at it and go, yeah, I don't know if I'd love it, love it if I had never seen the show and got captivated by the people. They got the same actors. So you've got Nathan Fillion, Gina Torres, Alan Tudyk. Morena Bakin, Bakarin, Adam Baldwin, Jewel Strait, the Summer Glau, they're coming back, and you got a new, um, I don't know how to say his name, oh boy, Chuwittal Ijofor, as the operator, great actor, I've seen him in tons of stuff, I just don't know how to fucking say his name, Jesus Christ, good actor though. Um, there's a chemistry and a charm that they just picks right up. There was a interest in the movie, I think, uh, 2003, and, um, he wanted to make the movie. They thought they were going to give, like, a big budget, um, you know, $100 million movie. It turns out that it's actually... 39 million which is in fucking sane watch this movie serenity i recommend it it is a continuation of the tv show now it's set in 2517 it has a space western type uh feel great uh chemistry great acting cinema it just works on a lot of levels there's some breakout performances there will be maybe a little confusion if you don't know the tv show but like i said they found a way to do it well uh so it kind of centers on summer glau's character river i believe they call her in a sense that um they really just take the leash off her she's like a uh uh super jason bourne psychic prepped type uh operative or something like that and she has a secret type information so it's the the double their efforts to get her and the captain mal who's nathan fillion is um they're gonna drop her off long story short in these that i don't give too much plot but this is a movie that's out already it's been out for so long they are dealing with what's uh cannibalistic beings called the reavers and it's like uh you know it's it's always one of those things that's like uh the boogeyman the whispers it reminds me of something from farscape i think i don't know which one came first but um there's a interstellar war in the sense that as I explained in the TV show, there's the inner planets, the outer planets. There's a war. Um, the captain and uh, XO, I guess, are what you would call um, you know, veterans of that war, so they understand it. Anyway, these operatives want River. They go chasing her, so Mal decides to go to the Reavers and make them fight. It ends in heartbreak for one of the characters. One of the best characters it's just really rips your fucking heart out literally i guess 
and it showcases because these are everybody's scared shit of the Reavers. They will fuck you up. They will eat you. You know, and and they're on fucking ships that crash into you. And I guess what you would call it, hole you like they put a hole in you and they board your ship and they fucking eat you. So like, they're like terrifying, you know, in that sense. And they're all about to get away after you know leaving their son, um, their shipmate who heartfelt character who passed away but they've got to get this signal out and summer glow river lets them get through a door and then closes the door and turns towards all the reavers and it's like the matrix type moves and you know they do the cutaway when the door opens again all the reavers are dead so she's like been activated um the hints of this in the tv show were very small and like I said, it's such a disaster in a way how Firefly was so good, so charming, went right off the rails, got canceled. And I talked about it in there, you put episodes out in the wrong way. They I don't think they ever got a chance to do this. Uh I could see this have been led up to a season two or a season three where he was going with the story that, you know, there's a uh, confusion at first. He's got a ragtag crew trying to make his way in the frontier of space as new solar system has been inhabited that type of thing like i said it's 2517 um it's just uh <laughs> it's i think summer glow knocks it out of the park in this movie what they do with her but like i said it's it's watered down in the regular show but i try to separate my love of Josh Whedon's work and knowing that he's a fucking jerk off now that do I hold these movies higher than they should be maybe maybe I am a little biased um but I think if people watch this movie never saw the show a little like confused at how they're such a crew and then they watch the movie I think they're gonna be entertained they're gonna like it it's done well there's so much to love from it. The actors, the way they work together, it seems seamless from the show, which is rare, I guess. And to be able to get the whole cast back, that's another thing. And with the budget so low, it's amazing what they did. You look at this, you look at the, uh, you know, Phantom Menace or even movies that, um, you know, broke ground. The money they put into them is amazing. It's just insane. This is thirty-nine million. Yeah, it did become a blockbuster, and it might not have, um, you know, gave him the fame or notoriety he deserved for Firefly and Serenity itself as a movie. But when people look back, it's been you know somewhat years now. I think it's well looked upon. I think it's got a huge cult following. And it was like the icing on the cake. It's someone gets the chance to take something they love, put it on TV, for whatever reason it gets canceled. And I've talked about it on my podcast. It's ridiculous. The show is great. You know, for several reasons it gets canceled. You can bring your vision back and bring it to the forefront and make a movie out of it. That's it's very hard to do. I mean, can we really go back and think of all the movies that we've seen that have started as a TV show and failed? I mean, I, I bet they're out there in that sense. I just look at this and I'm, I'm amazed. Uh, hey, you know what? Maybe it is a lot to do with how much I just wanted the show to continue and being a part of it in the sense that it's not something I'm looking back on. It's, you know, I went through it like I would have loved to have seen the show keep going. There's, um, now there's not much more to say in that way unless I go through the movies beat by beat, which I don't do in a lot of these podcasts since I'm just, uh, turn on the mic and with some free time. But since I did the podcast on Firefly the TV series, I knew I had to jump on the mic and do this. 
I totally would implore people to watch this movie. Give it a shot on the basis of what it is itself. Sci-fi movie. Um, if you want to give it an angle of a space western, okay. And I talked about this on the other podcast too. I don't know if Josh Whedon's fucking downfall now is going to impact things. I don't know how I feel on that. Um, I don't know if I went to it in depth on the Firefly podcast, but how? what line does someone cross where you no longer respect their work? Like, I can understand, uh, you know, the philosophy or the, you know, thinking about, okay, this guy's a mass murderer, but he has a cure for cancer. All right. Whatever, you still get the cure, you use it. Do you not use it? Of course you use it. Okay, but then he's a mass, the greatest mass murderer, and he writes a book, and it's a bestseller. Like, someone is a child molester, you find out, and then he's a great pop star. These type of things. Where do we say, okay, I don't give the time of day no more? And I can get it, so I understand that. I just think that, um, you know, I got the magic of the first, you know, I'm Growing up, I'm watching the shows. I'm a big TV geek, movie geek. He's right up my alley. I love Buffy. I even like the movie that he made. Angel is so much of his work I love. But now, I don't look and get excited if I see his name on something. As a matter of fact, I probably can now say it's more of a turn off. So, just like Firefly, it's a little weird to say, oh, you know what? I recommend Watch Serenity. Uh, you know, directed by Josh Whedon. You know, I don't know. I mean, he, he's been guilty of being a jerk off and might be sued and the way he treats people on the set. So it could be just an arrogant director thing, bad times, this and that. Unless more comes out, I don't know. Look at the Avengers movie. It's fucking amazing. He's so talented in that way. But there's only so much of uh, a jerk off people will tolerate. So in that case, I, I hear, I could, I could see the argument. But 2005, movie comes out. He had all his fans try to get the TV show brought back. They tried, um, you know, I mean, back then, still had some uh, momentum going, but. It failed. It didn't get one of those treatments like now. Like there's a, I did a podcast on a show called um, Sense Eight. The show was fucking phenomenal. It did like two seasons. Got picked up, uh, got dropped, and then someone said, right, you know what? We'll do. Um, we'll let you finish it. It's like a two hour episode. It's fucking hard. The show was amazing. Why isn't that show going right now? I don't know. There's all these politics and stuff. But looking at it from the point of view uh, perspective now, you can see some directors might just be jerk-offs and not worth keeping around. If you've got a really good product, do people just say they, they reach that line where they go, look, I don't want to deal work with you no more. I don't care how good your product is. I don't know. So the future of Josh Whedon, I'm not sure. But these are the things in the past that I really loved, that I really was captivated by. As I explained in my Firefly podcast, it's a crazy ride. It's such a good show. I would argue that you can't be objective and say it's bad or whatever. Yeah, you could have taste and stuff. So it's like one of those shows that just disappears. I did, uh, did I didn't do one yet. The good guys, it's like one season. It's the best cop buddy show. I think Tom Hanks' son is in that. Anyway, it didn't go nowhere. You can get picked up. I don't understand why. Anyway, we're looking at maybe the end of Josh Whedon's professional career in a way where it's coming out where there's just no end to the people coming forward and saying how abusive he is on the set and mean. So. But I understand there's a tolerance level for certain people. Don't know if that'll impact anybody's um, 
viewing of a movie, but I do recommend Serenity. It's a great sci-fi, great cast. Everybody does it well. It comes back from a TV show, missing not a beat. Just, you know, it's a rare moment, I guess. It's, I guess it's really hard to do, and I recommend it. So everybody be well. I hope you get your... Um, everybody gets their shit in order. It's pretty bad. I mean, the va- even though the vaccine's working and looks like it's doing things, there's so much damage to infrastructure, to everything. I had to go to the mechanic, and I uh, I'm coming out of a delivery, and I literally opened the door and almost smashed into my mechanic who works miles away. And I say, "Oh, I've been hearing a noise in, in the front." By the front tire, he goes, turn your radio up. And I laughed because that's actually what I did. I was like, you know, I don't want to be bothered with that sound. So I turned the radio up, but you can't ignore it. And I said, uh, you know, I'll stop by. He goes, oh, no, I uh, closed the shop. Now, I've lost my job with the major company I worked with. I'm scrambling to do little things. and. I can just imagine how bad it is out there. So I hope some of these podcasts, in some sense, of my shitty fucking equipment, maybe, and just that it gets through and brings people some joy. I love the movie Serenity. I hope everybody's doing well. Take care, everybody.